So you've just played a long, hard-fought game against a pretty even opponent, and you end up with this position right here where you have one extra pawn. So you move it, you get a queen, but now what do you do? In this video, we're going to look at how to checkmate with just a king and a queen, and it's going to be an easy-to-follow step-by-step process that you can use every time. Coming up. In the king and queen checkmate, there are three very important principles that you have to remember. So number one, you have to have the opponent's king on the edge of the board. So where it is right now in the center, you will not be able to checkmate. Even if you put the queen and king in the perfect position, it's just not going to happen. They cannot cover all the squares needed. So you have to, first of all, get the king to the edge of the board. So somewhere on the edge is where he needs to be so that you can checkmate him. That is the first principle. The second thing that you need to remember is you have to use your king to help. You cannot checkmate with only your queen. The queen is a very powerful piece. It can do a lot, but it's not good enough to get checkmate on its own. You have to use your king to help. So that's the second thing that you have to remember. The third and final thing to keep in mind is that you do not want to get a stalemate. And you have to be careful because it's very easy to do that with a king and a queen if you're not paying attention. If you don't know what stalemate is, it's just like checkmate, except instead of the king being in check, nothing's attacking your opponent's king. That's a stalemate, that's a, that's a tie game, that's a draw. And you don't wanna draw if you have an extra queen, you should be able to get a win. So the third principle is be careful for stalemate. And I'll show you examples of exactly what that looks like as soon as we start going through the example. The first principle was to get the king to the edge of the board. So how do you do that? Here's what I recommend you do. You use your queen to make a box. And every time you move your queen, you make the box a little bit smaller until finally you forced the king to the edge of the board. So let's look at an example. If I move my queen to d4, I've created this box. Okay, the king cannot cross these lines. He's stuck in these squares over here, right? He cannot cross these lines. So let's say black moves here. Now what's a queen move that makes the box a little bit smaller and pushes black king a little bit closer to the edge of the board. Well, right here on c3, again, I have a box, and this time there's only two columns that he can walk back and forth between, so two files. So if he moves here, I can make the box smaller again, I can make it smaller again, I can make it smaller again, and now finally when he moves to the edge of the board, I've got him right where I want him, on the edge of the board. That is step number one. Okay, now this is a very important position. So when black moves his king to a8, only move, you remember the third principle of the queen and king checkmate. It's avoid stalemate. If you continue to make the box smaller, in this case, and I move my queen to b6, this is an example of a stalemate. Why? Because the queen is not attacking black's king. It's attacking these squares, but it's not attacking his king. But he can't move to any of those squares because the queen is covering them. So that's a stalemate and a draw. It's a tie game, not what you want. So once you get the king to where he has two squares where he can move back and forth, do not move your queen any closer or you will get a stalemate. So it's at this point that principle number two comes into play, which was, if you remember, bring the king to help out. So that's what we do now. We just bring our king and black simply has to move back and forth. So we just bring our king over all the way. And now we have a checkmate with our queen. And now it's different than a stalemate because he is in check. The queen is attacking the king. So it's not stalemate, it's checkmate. And there you go. Okay, so now that you know how to do the checkmate, you should probably practice it a couple times just so it really sinks in. One place to do this is chess.com. I'll post a link in the description below. And it'll just take you to this page where it has a bunch of checkmates where you can practice. So you click on the queen mate and then you'll click start. And then you can just make your moves and it'll automatically move for black and you can just practice what we talked about. I, I believe the chess.com one does require a membership, which is like $2 a month. So I'll also post another one for LI chess, which is a free version. I'm just, um, I've been using chess.com lately, so this is what I'm more familiar with, but I'll post both of those down there uh, in the description in case you wanna go that, that route as well. If you got some value from this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. And now it's time for the end of video puzzle. I'm gonna start adding these to the end of each video just as a little extra practice. So in this position, it is black to move. And what is black's best move? If you think you see it, put it in the comments below and let me know what you think it is. Thanks a lot.